Hi, and thanks everyone for joining us on today's webcast on BI and analytics governance with Tableau. My name is Ali Hogan, and I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant here at Thoroughgood. Before we get into our agenda, I'd like to talk a bit about our three objectives for today. During this webcast, we will discuss some of the fundamental tenets of business intelligence governance, introduce Thoroughgood's approach to BI governance, and highlight how Tableau fits into an overall governance approach. Our agenda today will start with the introduction to Thoroughgood. We'll then briefly introduce Tableau before we move into a deep dive on governance and establishing a governance strategy. For those of you unfamiliar with Thoroughgood, we are an independent professional services consulting firm specializing in business intelligence and analytics solutions. We've We've been delivering value in this space for over 25 years, and we operate as a single organization, servicing our customers globally and often working in leveraged teams across our offices in New York, Philadelphia, London, Bangalore, and Singapore. All of our consultants are recruited and trained in the same way to develop a unique mix of business understanding, technical excellence, and analytical ability. We provide a full range of services to support your business goals, covering the end-to-end -end life cycle of any project from initial strategy and roadmap definitions to requirements gathering design and implementation of complex systems through to the training and support of business users. We also provide ongoing data or analytic services as well as planning and business modeling solutions. Our clients typically span four data-rich verticals, consumer goods, pharmaceutical and health services, banking, and insurance. Our clients are some of the leading organizations in these sectors, and we take a lot of pride in the longstanding relationships we have fostered with some of the names you see here. These organizations are large, complex businesses, and we rely on our thorough business understanding and deep technical expertise to deliver successful solutions to their business challenges. In terms of the technologies we work with, we are an independent consulting firm meaning we don't work with one specific technology. We do, however, work and partner with many of the key players across the market in order to provide our clients with a solution that best suits their needs. Our Tableau practice and partnership was initiated back in 2012, and it's been a pretty exciting ride. Since that time, we've established Thoroughgood as a member of Tableau's Partner Advocacy Board, a strategic alliance partner in Tableau's alliance program, and we're named Partner of the Year in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa region. We have over 85 consultants with tab Tableau development and delivery experience, including its integration with other technologies such as Salesforce, Teradata, and AWS. Now, I'll briefly introduce three different products within the Tableau suite, either as a crash course for those of you new to Tableau or as a refresher for others. Tableau development really starts with Tableau Desktop, the program that sits on your computer to allow you to connect to and visualize your data. From there, you'll want to actually distribute your creative report, which is where Tableau Server comes in. It's a web-based platform viewable within your browser, like IE or Chrome. Multiple Tableau workbooks can be published within this platform and shared with hundreds or thousands of users to enable enterprise collaboration. Additionally, from an enterprise governance perspective, you can have IT-supported data sources published onto a server, allowing users to leverage those data sources for their own analysis. There's also Tableau Online. Tableau Online is essentially the same thing as Tableau Server from a user interface perspective. You're still allowing users to access published reports and data sources within their browser. The only difference between server and online is its underlying infrastructure setup and service model. Tableau Online is hosted and maintained by Tableau themselves as a software as a service available as a subscription, whereas Tableau Server is under your control. Finally, there are other products such as Tableau Public and Tableau Reader, but we'll be looking to focus on the first three in today's presentation. If you're interested in Public or Reader, please reach out to us separately. Now that we've covered the introduction to Tableau, we'll get into the meat of today's presentation, starting with discussing our fundamental tenets of governance. 
In working with a number of different customers on their BI governance strategy, we've honed in on four critical considerations that underpin every successful BI strategy. We'll go through each of these considerations, which we've boiled down to the two P's and the two B's. First, your strategy must be practical, meaning strategy and standards should be rooted in actual use cases. This is a common pitfall of governance strategies where people would develop their strategy in a vacuum, never considering the real life application of the strategy. By ensuring the strategy and standards are rooted in practical applications, standards will be more easily adopted across the organization. Second, your strategy must be prioritized. There are many different topics that can be covered by a governance strategy. Therefore, it's vital that your strategy is prioritized so proper focus is given to the areas deemed mo most important for your organization at that time. Third, and our first B, your strategy must be balanced. This tenet works hand in hand with prioritized, and it's important that the priorities are balanced to address all areas of need, including the people using the BI platform, the data sources collected in the system, the tools at your disposal, and the process that pulls everything together. Lastly, your strategy must be bespoke or unique to your business. This is perhaps the most important tenet and one that is often overlooked. Each organization is unique, so it's critical that people do not see governance as a one-size-fits-all approach. With these four tenets in mind, let's talk about four general focus areas of governance and some of the governance topics that focus into these areas. As I mentioned, there are four areas of governance activity that typically play into an overall strategy. Each of these areas will require different levels of focus depending on where you are in your governance journey. We'll get into more on that later. For now, let's step through each of these areas and highlight some of the key activity or topics we typically see in each category. First, we have standards definition. This is likely what most people will first associate with governance. There are a number of topics to consider in your standards, such as security, mobile, software development lifecycle, and best practices. These standards can take many forms, but it's most important that these standards are prioritized, balanced, and practical, so they can be easily applied to the real life scenarios you'll see in your business. While standards definition will likely take a front seat in establishing a governance strategy, the overall success of the strategy is just as much contingent on the strategy's ongoing execution. In this area, we focus on executing the standards. Key to this area is the sharing of standards in a two-way feedback loop. What's important to note here is that the standards need to evolve as pro projects, people, tools, and processes change. We'll discuss more on this when we share our approach on establishing a governance strategy. Next, we have administration and support. Similar to ongoing execution, this focuses on how to enable users and admins to effectively execute and grow within your governance framework. Activities relevant to this area focus on training, coaching, and monitoring. Sometimes we'll work with customers on the user empowerment programs, which specifically focus on growing users within your organization, focusing on best practices, data and tool trainings, and fostering an analytics community. Lastly, we have a forward-looking area of focus, exploratory and future. As I mentioned with ongoing execution, your governance strategy will continue to evolve as the BI industry changes and evolves. It's important to give balanced focus to looking ahead. Company initiatives change, tools change, product capability continues to adapt and increase. All of this will require anticipation and adaptation as your governance strategy continues to grow. These general focus areas and topics can be considered in a number of BI tool landscapes. Because today we're focusing on Tableau, I've called out a couple of areas where Tableau offers some unique features either in their desktop or server tool. These are by no means the only ways in which Tableau offers tools that can help and other technologies in the BI industry have similar tools as well. The areas we are going to focus on today are mobile, disseminating standards and best practice, and monitoring adoption performance and data. In a moment, I'm going to jump into a brief demo to highlight some of the features 
Tableau offers in these four areas. Before I do, though, it's important to note that Tableau, like any other BI tool, won't create or execute your governance strategy. It's important that you don't rely only on the tools in your BI landscape to shape your governance strategy. Rather, you must draw on the proper balance of tools, data, people, and process. So now we'll jump into a demo in which we briefly talk through some of the helpful features Tableau offers to aid with these governance topics. Here, I'll start with Tableau Desktop, the developer tool for creating visualizations and dashboards. Here I have a dashboard created on a data set with some Fitbit information. These visualizations provide insight into some of the fitness KPIs at an aggregate level based on activity level and also throughout time. If I want to share this information with people on their mobile devices, I can use the device preview functionality in Tableau Desktop to redesign and resize the visualizations within this dashboard for better usability on a mobile device. A key point is that this dashboard can be viewed as is on a mobile device. However, we know that many organizations have some governance standards around mobile views for common devices. Here, I can select device preview and, ha and I have a variety of device types that I can cycle between and even different models that I can switch between. As part of my company's mobile strategy, I know that iPads and iPhones are used throughout my organization, although I'm not sure if our budget allows for the new $1,000 iPhone X. But here, I can switch between using the iPad template and see the rectangular shape for that. I'll add this tablet layout, and now I can rearrange all of my visualizations within, to fit within this preview. I'll remove the KPIs because I don't think that's as relevant for my mobile users and I will also remove this top graph here. I'll switch this to be floating, and now I can resize this to fit within uh, the, the screen size for an iPad. Since I have this saved as my template, I can easily switch between the default view and the view that I would see on my tablet. It's important to note that I haven't lost my other visualizations on my dashboard, and could make a similar device, um, similar device template for an iPhone, let's say. Another Tableau desktop feature is the option to record the performance of a given event and activity within a workbook. This helps with monitoring the rendering and query time for local workbooks during development to ensure that they are compliant with any performance standards that are defined within the organization. I can enable this by going to Help, settings and performance, and start performance recording. Then I'll just open this dashboard again as an example. Save the changes. And here Tableau has recorded the activity of opening the dashboard. So I will go to help and stop the performance recording. Now a new screen will appear to show all the events related to opening the dashboard. I'll expand this a little bit and show all the events throughout time. Here I can see it's organized into three, se three separate areas, the timeline, events, and query as well. And if I expand the timeline a little bit, now I can see all of the given events associated with open the, opening the dashboard and the amounts of time that are associated with each of those, such as executing the query and computing the layout. This particular dashboard is running on a pretty small data set, so the query times are virtually non-existent, as you can see here. However, if this, was a data, if this was a dashboard to a live connection with a database, this would show the query script and execution time for the visualizations in the dashboard. This can be very helpful with performance tuning of dashboard and optimizing queries that might, may put a large strain on the underlying database. Now, we'll move on to Tableau Server and Tableau Online. And I'd like to show a few features that help with powerful enterprise scalability. First, a brief introduction to Tableau Server. As I mentioned earlier, Tableau Server and Tableau Online allow you to publish Tableau workbooks, and it's a browser-based tool to help you organize, share, and disseminate content throughout your organization. So from a governance perspective, 
This is helpful and arguably vital platform to be able to su successfully roll out Tableau. To introduce you to the Tableau server Tableau online interface, here we are viewing a project which helps us to organize our content. In this case, we're actually viewing Tableau online. Tableau's hosted software as a service offering of Tableau Server. However, the interface is pretty identical. Tableau Server or Tableau Online can be organized in many ways to fit your organization's needs. Fundamentally, you will have sites and projects to organize your content, and then workbooks, which are the files you publish to Tableau Server, like what we saw in Tableau Desktop. Following on from some of the topics of monitoring adoption and performance, Tableau Server offers some additional functionality beyond what we saw in the desktop tool to help with this approach. Specifically, as a Tableau site admin, if I go to the status page here, I can see a number of pre-built views with information around Tableau Server. On this page, we have information all the way down to the granularity of a user and view. So from an administrative perspective, it would be easy for me to track who was doing what on my Tableau Server. As an example, if we go to the All Users dashboard, and if this, as this loads here in a minute, we can see the different types of interactions on this site over the past seven days. I can update this to be the past seven months to give me a better, to bring in a bit more data and show the Tableau server usage over um, the past few months here. Here, I can see a significant spike in August, which may cause me to dig deeper into the server usage, administration, and monitoring. Further, the underlying data that feeds into these Tableau views is also available in most cases, so I could create custom admin views if I wanted to. These views can be leveraged in conjunction with your approach to admin and support to provide helpful insights for those helping and empowering users. Next, I want to talk a bit around disseminating standards and best practice. There are many ways with which companies look to share standards and best practices. In this case, I'm going to put a somewhat unique spin on the idea of disseminating standards, giving some interesting functionality in Tableau Server. Specifically, I'm going to talk about Tableau's data server. So if I navigate back to my default project view here, I can see I have this data sources tab. I'll select this here, and I can see that this is a central list of all of my data sources from a variety of different places that are assigned to this project. These data sources may be here because they were created for a single dashboard, or they may be published as a central data source that I or any users with access could look to leverage. In this sense, I'm able to use the Tableau data server as a central repository for capturing and sharing data source and calculation standards. For example, I can click into this reseller SQL data set and start to create a workbook. Here, I'm using Tableau server's web edit functionality, which is very similar to Tableau desktop. Once connected, you can see I have a data connection predefined by the owner of this data source. This data connection can now be a central version of the truth for organization-wide calculations. This is extremely powerful when an organization is looking to centralize the definitions of metrics or fields. Building upon this, another powerful aspect of the Tableau data server is that this central repository of data sources can be a mix of different uh, varieties, such as SQL, Teradata, or Hadoop, et cetera. And all of this can be visible, invisible to the users. If a platform were to change, part of the data governance strategy could be that users never really need to know about those changes. In summary, Tableau Data Server allows an organization to centralize and disseminate approved data sources to aid in consistent and accurate reporting. Now that we've established the key pillars or tenets of governance, as well as noted some specific features that Tableau offers to aid this in this governance, we'll talk a bit more about the thoroughgood approach to governance to help you understand how you might go about implementing such a framework in your organization. As I mentioned earlier, developing a governance strategy is truly a journey. We have worked with our customers to develop customized governance strategies to meet the unique needs of their organization. 
While each strategy is specific to an organization, the process in which it can be developed can be applied across the business. The first step is to create a list of governance items that are important to your organization. If you think back to the fundamental tenets I shared a few slides ago, there were a variety of topics you could look to address as part of your strategy. This list is just a baseline, and we would expect it to be inclusive of many of the topics we've identified, including self-service, mobile, and monitoring. If you're using Tableau, you might also consider some of the features this tool offers to aid in aspects of a governance strategy, like what we showed in our demo. Once we have collected a list of potential items, we'll look to bring together the right people to discuss the key objectives of the governance strategy and what it is they want to accomplish. It's important here to include relevant sponsors from both IT and the business to ensure that the technical possibilities align to the business goals. With the main objectives in mind, we then work with our clients to prioritize the list based on what's important to the key sponsors and what tools, technologies are relevant in their organization. Prioritizing the list helps ensure that the most critical items are addressed first, but that we don't forego the holistic nature of the entire strategy. After prioritizing the governance items, we'll look to identify a few representative use cases as the basis for testing the governance strategy. By doing this, we ensure that the standards designed are rooted in practical application and developed alongside real business users. With the prioritized list of governance topics, as well as your practical use cases, we are now ready to create our initial standards and strategy definitions. Depending on the list and use cases, this initial definition could be fairly quick and we use some of the prioritized items mentioned in step three. As these, as these definitions come together, taking input from the key players as well as our practical use cases, we'll look to test our initial definitions by applying them to the candidate use cases. This should really be done in close conjunction with the setting up of standards and strategy, even though we've listed them as subsequent steps. And of course, this testing will likely need you to iterate on those standards and feedback into the definitions as well as the use cases. Once there is an initial or 1.0 version of the strategy the organization is happy with, the strategy can be released more widely into the organization and the rollout with coaching and training can begin. Here, it's critical to consider getting the right people involved to ensure the governance strategy is properly adopted. We find that it's also important and helpful to set up some sort of forum that users can provide feedback on the governance standards so that the strategy can be continued to be iterated upon. This creates a feedback loop that allows end user feedback to integrate it into the overall strategy. Looking at the approach in a bit more detail, we can see that it aligns to the four governance pillars I shared in the previous slides. If you approach a governance strategy from the beginning, it's pretty clear that the standards definition initially takes up a large portion of the time compared to the other focus areas. But as your governance strategy matures, the time spent on each of these areas will flex and change based on the activities as you approach as an organization. In this, in this sense, these focus areas are constantly evolving based on where you are in your governance journey. Something else to note about the approach is that the analysis on tools and technology happens pretty early on. It's key to understand the technologies in your organization and how they can help you in your approach to governance. As I highlighted earlier, Tableau has some great functionality to help with a variety of the governance topics. So now, you may be wondering, well, how do I get started on this journey? Just like the bespoke nature of a governance strategy, we don't expect everyone to be on the same page with their current governance strategy. To help you consider how you might get started, we've listed a, common, a couple of common questions or difficulties we've seen our customers struggling with and noted some possible ways to overcome these obstacles. As an example, you may be struggling to identify the right areas of focus for your governance strategy. In this case, you may be seemingly early on in your journey, so starting at the beginning of our approach may work best. 
Therefore, we suggest bringing together the key players in a visioning session that helps you identify and prioritize the key areas of focus. Alternatively, looking at the third bubble, you may have a governance strategy in place, but some use cases or projects that don't necessarily fit in. In this case, it's possible that some of your standards are either not rooted in practical application or that the standards are out of date. Consider revisiting the standards by starting by organizing feedback and prioritizing the key governance areas. Wherever you are in your journey, it's never too late to pick up the approach we've discussed today to start or enhance your governance strategy. If any of these particular challenges resonate with you and you'd like to discuss them in more detail, please don't hesitate to reach out via the chat panel or following the webcast. So hopefully the webcast today has showed you how you might look to set up a governance framework within your organization, as well as some of the key areas of focus within your governance strategy. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I put my contact information here on the screen, so please feel free to reach out directly if you are interested in any more details. Thanks for attending today's session and enjoy the rest of your day.